Hi everyone, so great to have you on board the My Secret Kitchen launch for March 2016. We have 19 new products to launch in the, in the UK and we're so excited to get you all of those new products that you wanted to try and test and enjoy in the UK. Now, first of all, I have to apologize. I'm wearing a Your Inspiration at Home apron because I'm in Australia and I didn't have my My Secret Kitchen one along. And we're gonna be looking at Your Inspiration at Home products. Doesn't matter what's on the outside, it's what's on the inside that counts and that's exactly the, um, what holds true for these products. They are the same products that you're going to have in the UK. You're just gonna have your lovely blue logo on it. So, let's get started. So as I said, we have 19 new products. Um, and I'm the creator and founder of uh, Your Inspiration at Home, all of the My Secret Kitchen products as well. So we're really, really excited to bring you up to speed on all of these new. Your catalog will be um, in either late this week or early next week so we can start shipping these fab fantastic new catalogs for you. As you can see, the new Saba Laksa is one of your products that I just introduced here in um, Australia, but will be in the UK as well. Very exciting, brand new catalog, full, beautiful, gorgeous catalog as you come to love with uh, My Seeker Kitchen. So a fantastic new content page, um, some information on how to use the dips, not just as a dip mix, so it's great information for your customers. And um, then we go into some beautiful shots of food shots, as I know you all love, and some quick recipe ideas. Um, and the food recipes um, will be on the uh, Vista print for your postcards, which is fantastic. Uh, great uh, information on the flavor stack and also on um, just some of the locations that we get product, that we source product globally. We're very, we're kind of picky as it says here, we're very picky. And um, the products that we um, uh, use and find and source all over the world to make the, you know, the ingredients, we don't source products, we source ingredients, um, for me to be able to make these fantastic products for you, um, it all it highlights uh, the quality there for you. So it's um, all natural, organic, wild crafted products. We do not source um, or use ingredients that contain gluten uh, or MSG or additives, fillers or preservatives. We also do not source or use any GMO um, ingredients at all. And we rarely use sugar or salt. And when we do, it's Australian cane sugar and um, Australian sea salt. Um, so I only use those when I need to just finish the flavor with that and it's required in that recipe. So you're real, I know everyone is so happy with the um, quality of the product or ingredients that go in. We also have um, a page on the fundraiser, so um, a great way, introduction for you to um, at your demos, uh, your tastings, um, and your shows. Now this is one of going to be one of your favorite shots, I'm going to reveal that in a minute. Um, there for you. And these two pages, of course it'll say My Secret Kitchen, but um, same pages, a little bit about getting social with um, MSK and um, our great tasting rewards for being a host. And finally there's some pages, let me just find it here, new catalog, I'm flipping through the page just like you would do at a, at a show. Um, travel the world with us. So the many international amazing incentive trips that you can um, earn and ones that we have been on in the past with uh, Your Inspiration at Home and now with My Secret Kitchen. And a little bit about the freezer fill or freezer meal workshops that um, you've, ne you've all um, had a chance to try and love and uh, freezer meal number four is coming out. Um, and of course our pairings that um, show great recipes on how to use a couple of products together. And um, again, talking about the business opportunity with My Secret Kitchen and the great ways to travel, whether it's traveling around the world um, through a wander on the table or a wander globally to um, various locations to actually taste this amazing food firsthand as my inspiration. Okay, um, the second thing I'm really excited about, this just landed in Australia in time for our leaders meeting last week. Um, 
or this week, uh, but for you, it's about to happen um, as well. So it's our Get Inspired Recipe Book. Now this one is designed for you as a consultant. So all the consultants from here, well, as soon as it lands in my secret kitchen, will be getting this in their kit. It's a great way. The feedback is we love our kit, but we don't know what to do with it. And um, we want to give you some quick tips and favorites amongst consultants after the um, five years that we've been um, growing and learning together. So here's some of the favorites of the My Secret Kitchen or Your Inspiration at Home consultants globally. So it's got um, some quick tips from your directors in Australia on um, just how to make your, your show work out really well. And then it's got some, I think it's 40 some or 40 pages of recipes, you know, multiple recipes per page. Um, so some of the very um, simple ones to some a little bit more complex, but gives you ideas on how to use your kit as soon as you walk in the door with you, uh, My Secret Kitchen. Um, cheese logs, I know this is one of the most um, popular um, uh, recipe ideas in uh, doing parties, and so it's got that as well. So just some very basics and a few more complex, but something to get you very, very comfortable with the product. So I know this is gonna be a hot seller uh, for you as consultants, um, for you. Now what I want to do the next stage is once we have this in your hands for you to use, um, we're gonna adapt this page to make it quick tip ideas on how to use your Inspiration at Home My Secret Kitchen products. So that way, you'll be able to actually sell it to your um, uh, customers and hosts as well. So it'll be something that you'll be able to pass on. Okay. Um, there was a reason I was doing this first thing in the morning because it was a little bit cooler. Now that it's warmed up, I'm just going to actually run two seconds and pop the air conditioning on. <laughs> it's going to be noisy, but i got to do it. <laughs> All right. There we go. Yeah, we'll start. <sighs> okay. Um, yes, it was original at 5.30 this morning. It wasn't too hot. Now it's heating up here in Australia. And I know, can you feel the warmth? I know you guys need it in the UK. So there you go. Okay. Let's get started with the 19 new products. I'm going to start with um, the dip mixes. And I'm going to start with our first dip mix because it's on the cover of your new catalog. And um, laksa is one of my favorite quick tip, uh, quick um, meals, uh, lunches, but it is so packed full of nutrients. You feel like you're getting a salad, a pasta, a soup, or a curry all in one. And um, what I love about it, it's kind of a carefree soup. You just toss whatever you want in it, and you've got an amazing soup. So with the Saba laksa, Saba is a uh, location in Malaysia, so this is a taste of Malaysia. Um, and it's got a fairly unique flavor um, for the laksa, so that's the one I've chosen to duplicate. Now, um, of course, it's my own recipe, it's I, my own way of, of doing it. It's never quite, you know, exact, although, um, you know, our staff brought in a laksa this morning um, as they, try, they tested this, and it was amazing. Um, actually, Malaysian staff, and, and they couldn't believe how um, amazing this was. So, um, what it, this has some, some unique ingredients that we've not used before in anything. We finally sourced them, and of course, coming into Australia, they have to be organic or 100% um, certified non-irradiated or um, non-ETO as well, which is ethylene oxide, and we're not allowed to have that in Australia, and you're not allowed to have that in um, Europe and the UK as well. So just to know that all of the products that we, ingredients that we import from the US, we have to be extremely stringent on um, not to have that, because it's quite commonplace in the US to have um, ingredients that have ethylene oxide or irradiation. So what this has in it is garlic, coconut, um, uh, turmeric, I'm just going to read this off here, shallots, which is the new, one of the new ingredients, and they are so packed full of flavor, uh, cumin, lemongrass, paprika, cilantro, or you also know that as um, coriander flakes, or um, um, Chinese flat parsley. Uh, chili flakes, coriander, so when I'm talking about coriander there, I'm talking about the ground seed coriander. Um, galangal, which is, um, for most people it's much like ginger root. 
Um, lime zest, so you've got that really pop of a lime. Uh, zest, a high citrus note. However, it's also got kaffir lime. And kaffir lime, I, I don't know, to me it's just, it's like lemongrass. I just absolutely love those two flavors. So they're so aromatic. They've got, but they've also got the savory notes. So they're not just, they smell like lemon, they smell like lime, but they're not, it, it's, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just different. It's um, really smooth and aromatic, not that pop um, citrus. And then leeks, which is also a new ingredient for us, um, and um, long pieces of uh, leeks in here. It's just amazing. It is so fragrant, so aromatic, and um, it's going to be a favorite. So to make a laksa, I'm not going to go through each one of these and how to make products or make uh, recipes, but this one um, I'm so passionate about. It. I really, right now, I'll tell you, it's my favorite. Everyone asks me, what is your favorite product? And I've, you know, I've always said um, uh, smoked orange grinder salt. It was an accident product for me to make, but I love it, and it's my favorite. And then the chai um, Shiraz smoked peppercorn is my other favorite, which you guys don't have yet. Um, but this one, if I had to pick a dip mix, it would be this, because it's so versatile, but it's got such a wow flavor. And, okay, so to make a laksa, as I said before, it's like having pasta, curry, soup, um, and a salad all at once. And it is crazy. So what I do is I take my, let's say I'm going to make a, a prawn or um, jumbo shrimp laksa, and I just fry that off with the laksa um, spice. And you can use as much as you want. I like things full flavor, so I'm going to use a little bit, um, and I'm being sarcastic, quite a bit. Um, and... Um, it, it, this one it doesn't have a lot of heat. There's a little bit, I would call it, you know, call it a mild to a medium, but it's not hot at all. It's not hot, okay? Um, and so fry that off for two minutes. Just warm it up, stir fry it. Um, you know, it could be four minutes, five minutes. Depends on what kind of protein you're using. Um, so if you're using prawns, um, chicken, uh, or fantastic, any fish with laksa, those are what it really goes well with. Um, or vegetarian, you can use uh, more root vegetables as well. So I just do that to get the flavors all together. Toss it in a soup pot with um, a vegetarian stock or um, chicken stock. Pop that in together and then throw in a can of coconut cream. I like the coconut cream. You can use the light version. It's a little bit more flavorful than the um, coconut milk. Simmer away, throw it in whatever vegetables you have in the fridge. It doesn't have to look a certain way. That's what I love about laksa. So the laksa downstairs that we just had um, as a sample of one of the stuff, it had carrots in it, um, maybe some celery, that kind of thing. And um, so that was the base. And that's it. You just let it simmer until the vegetables and the proteins are all done. It doesn't, you, you're not making a curry of it, so it's not going to reduce right down. And then you take your rice noodles. And you just sit those on um, in some hot water for four to five minutes. You drain those out um, and put them in the bottom of your bowl. Put the laksa over top with the proteins, whatever it is that you've got. And then you take your salad, so coriander leaf, um, uh, cilantro, uh, sprouts. It could be little pieces of little um, slivers of cucumber or carrots, you know, very tiny. And you put that on top. And that's what I love about it. It is all three things in one, and it's a very, very satisfying, um, but healthy uh, meal. So that is, you know, at least once, maybe twice a week, I'm having a laksa for my lunch. Too easy. All right, let's go on to the rest of the dip mixes. Oh, let me tell you what else you can do with it. Hang on. So as a dip mix, it is amazing. We just served this at the Leaders Conference as a dip mix, and they loved it. They, there were many, many people that agreed with me that this was their favorite um, out of all the dips. So I hope that you're really, really excited because we don't always bring um, brand new Your Inspiration at Home products that we launch in Australia out to the rest of the world right away. We want to see how they work and how they go and that you know, all the ingredients are going to be available all the time and that they're a top seller in Australia before we move them out to the rest of the world. But we knew this was going to be awesome and I'm really glad to see that the leaders agreed. Now, for anything like potatoes, uh, so you can do, um, you can put this in your quiche, 
uh, egg dishes, so quiche, potatoes are fantastic, any type of casseroles, you can even use it, uh, um, and like I said, in a laksa with rice noodles, you can do it as a um, more of a, um, an Asian type of uh, pasta. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do with it. Potato salad, just give it some time to rehydrate because it's got the large um, chunks there. I'd probably thin out your um, uh, mayonnaise with some sour cream. Fantastic. All right. Okay, let's move on to the next dip mix is dill and onion. This is one of my first dip mixes that I made. So it is packed full of flavor. Lots really, really great dill in here. Um, so if you love dill, you're going to love the amount of the dill flavor in there. So it's, it's quite dilly. y um, And then it's got the onion as well. Um, and it's really great. Um, I'm just going to find the ingredients listing here because it's a very um, basic dip mix. Um, so dill, I'm sorry, onion, dill, parsley, celery seed, and salt, okay? So this one doesn't have garlic. So if somebody doesn't like garlic in their tzatziki, you can use this instead, okay? Um, so just mix it with some sour cream or labna and um, some grated cucumbers. Drain the, the moisture off the cucumbers, mix it all up, and you've got a tzatziki. It works fantastic. I also use this one um, just in some mayonnaise and coat uh, the salmon if you want to have before you bake it. And what it does is it locks the salmon juices, the fish juices in there, and keeps your salmon from drying out, but it gives a lovely um, dill flavor on top. Um, it's also really good on potatoes, um, even hash browns, if you want to do hash browns. This is so lovely, um, sprinkled on top there. This is one of my favorite. I'll give you a really quick um, cheats. Um, uh, salad to take to a barbecue, let's say, or an event, they say bring, bring a dish and you're running out of time, you have no time to chop anything or anything like that. You just take a bag of frozen baby peas, um, thaw them out, drain off the water, mix um, uh, you know, this with mayonnaise, uh, mix it all together, let it set for a bit as you're driving to the barbecue, and so you've got a fantastic mint pea, uh, sorry, um, dill pea salad that everyone chilled and everyone's gonna love it. So, um, you, you know, they think it, this one is fresh. To me, it's, uh, it says potatoes, veggies, fish. Um, you can put it on chicken and roast vegetables, um, chicken, or sorry, roast um, potatoes or um, carrots or any root vegetable, just with a little bit of olive oil. Um, and you can choose this one, fantastic, um, or your lime olive oil and um, uh, brush that on. Uh, sprinkle some of this on top and you've got an amazing um, roast vegetable. Also, rice pilaf, so some celery, some um, diced carrots, and you put this right in with the water and you get a gorgeous rice pilaf as well. So it is going to be super popular. I know um, in the UK you love the dill um, like we do in um, Canada, so this, this one's going to um, do really well for you. Okay, the next one is the veggie dip mix. Um, great as a vegetable dip mix, <laughs> um, but it's also packed full of vegetables. Let me tell you which ones here. Um, the veggie dip mix has, I made it a long time ago, so I have to refer back to my notes. Um, onion, garlic, red peppers, carrots, okay, they take a little longer to rehydrate. Dill, spices, um, lots of my unique spices. Lemon peel, black pepper, cayenne, salt, and celery seed. Um, now, what you can use this one if you run out of stock, um, use some hot water and this becomes a really great stock substitute. Um, just like you would make your normal stock, absolutely fantastic. Um, I also, I love, if I'm doing a vegetable soup, this goes in it. It just brings all of the flavors out. A really quick and easy way to do um, a chicken rice soup is just um, pieces of chicken, diced chicken, some rice, some of this and water and there you go. <laughs> if you've got stock you want to put it in as well and you just cook until the rice is, um, is um, cooked and you've got this gorgeous soup. Took two minutes to make honestly other than sitting on the pot that's all it takes to make this. So a great um, one and of course in um, any potato dishes so this is great. If you're going to do it with a, a quiche or omelet make sure you've got enough time to rehydrate those um, veggies hugely popular here. Now, the next one is one that we launched uh, last time, like six months ago, in, um, it would have been in um, September, 
and it is the Cinco Pepper Enchilada. So Mexican food is hot, no pun intended. It is really hot right now in the world of home cooking, and um, but it's hard to find good, decent spices and blends because they're so full of salt and MSG. It's one of the worst for um, that in the um, you know food industry. This doesn't have any of that stuff in it. It's got ancho chilies. Ancho chilies are, is my favorite chili um, out there. And I was really, really happy when we were able to start importing that into Australia. And um, so it's a smoked chili. It's not hot. So it's like the, um, um, let me just give you all the ingredients. Uh, okay, so it's very much like the chipotle chili, but not hot. Hot, like a chipotle so it's smoother it's sweeter it almost tastes like wow there could be a little bit of tomato um, in it so it's that sweet um, or red pepper sweet um, so the ancho chili the um, it has onion cilantro again when I say cilantro um, I mean the um, flat leaf parsley or the um, um, coriander leaf cumin so it's got that really earthy Mexican um, flavor going on garlic oregano, paprika, um, parsley, a little bit of mild chili powder as well to give that real Tex-Mex um, flavor, salt and very minor amount of salt, um, a hit of the chipotle and black pepper. So this one is probably more on the mild to medium uh, range for heat. Um, oh, sorry, and the veggie has a little bit of uh, cayenne pepper, so it's got a little heat to in, it, in it, so it's not mild, um, not on the zero, it's got at least one chilies on this. This would be between a one and a two, but probably sitting at a two. And it is fantastic. Um, so making enchiladas, any Tex-Mex dish, you can run for this one. It really just has that smooth, earthy, smoky um, flavor to it. You're, you're absolutely gonna love it. I put this in scrambled eggs. This is my go-to for scrambled eggs. Either that or the guacamole dip mix, um, fantastic. Um, great for marinades for beef and pork and chicken, um, fantastic. There, a little bit of the uh, bourbon maple balsamic and this, woohoo, um, you're in business. Okay, let's talk about the Greek taverna. The Greek taverna is a um, one of my early blends there, and I'm really I love the versatility of this. You know, being in Australia and in the UK, lots of lamb dishes. Uh, so a little bit of a squeeze of lemon, some olive oil, throw this on, um, add some salt if you want, and you've got gorgeous lamb chops. Now, um, you can do this as a, in kebabs for chicken, same thing. There's no, do nothing different. Squeeze a lemon juice, some olive oil, and this. Um, and you're going to hear that a lot. Or you can use um, our, one of our balsamics as well. Um, now, you can also put this on potatoes, so roasted potatoes, peeled potatoes, squeeze a lemon juice, some olive oil, and this. Okay, you're starting to get the picture. That's how you use this particular one. Now, if you love Greek salad, you can put this in your Greek salad as well. Um, marinating olives, same thing. A little bit of balsamic, some um, olive oil, and this. And you can marinate your olives or feta cheese. So very, very, very versatile um, blend for any, if you're doing masaka, I mean, literally any Greek dish, this is going to be um, a great one. And pair it with the dill and onion, so you do the dill and onion as a tzatziki, or the tzatziki as a tzatziki, and um, you've got the whole Greek thing going on. Okay, let's move on to, oh, I'll give you the, um, better give you what's in it so you understand um, these flavors, because it's not, you don't get to taste them as I'm talking about them. Uh, and it's not on here. Okay, well, we'll move on. <laughs> the one I reached for. Okay, Nomad. Let me tell you the story about the Nomad um, and why it's called Nomad. So I was um, reading um, a magazine close to Thanksgiving in uh, US and Canadian Thanksgiving, or different timing. So I um, wanted to make something special. I thought, oh, let's have a look at. Um, something different, you know, I love Thanksgiving turkey, but I wanted to try something different, you know, something spice curator-ish. And uh, so I was reading a magazine with Marcus Samuelson as the, um, the um, key uh, chef author in this one. And he has um, a, a very blended background. And um, so what he had done was combined two heritages 
uh, into one uh, special meal. So he used a lot of Middle Eastern African um, spices, and I thought, well, I could do that. I do, I'll do my own. I'll just make something up, but I love the idea. So luckily, I have a whiteboard in my kitchen um, where I'm living in Florida. So as I wrote, it, uh, as I blended the spices together, I wrote it down. And basically, I took four of our existing spices, blended it, you know, after reading the article, going, okay, yeah, yeah, I can get that. Um, and putting it all together. So this is where the Nomad came. It's Baharat, Persian um, salt, um, um, Berber, Berberi, and um, Ras El Hanout, all in different um, you know, uh, quantities in there to create this. And it was the best turkey we had. Um, seriously, the best ever. So um, luckily I made it a little bit more than enough for the turkey and we continued to use that. And then when I decided, you know what, 32 ingredients, it is um, not the easiest one to make. Um, our blenders and batchers, it's all hand blended, hand batched. This isn't their favorite one to make, but it is our most versatile uh, rub out of every one. We, try, we have tried this on everything. We've tried it on fish. We've tried it on um, lamb. We've tried it on beef. We've tried it on um, chicken. It really works amazing. And then somebody um, just made a tenderer chicken with it and it said it was just like from home. So it really is a crazy versatile right from Africa, uh, Middle East, through to India. It does the whole, um, it works for everything. So um, just, you know, give this one a go. I know it's going to be your favorite um, on the barbecue, favorite for your go-to. It's like, okay, I've got this protein. What am I going to put on it? I'm sure that you're going to agree that Nomad Rub is the answer every time you're stumped. Okay, let's go to the baking spices. <clears throat> so pumpkin pie. Uh, this obviously is a very North American uh, spice blend, uh, specifically around pumpkin. Now what you'll notice with our apple pie and our gingerbread and our pumpkin pie, there's no sugar added. Sugar's cheap. You can add that yourself. And, and honestly, when you have such really great flavorful spices, I find that most people actually forgo the sugar when they're doing their things like hot cereal or banana breads and things like that. You don't need to have the extra sugar from the spice blend. So this has no sugar in it. Um, I use this one, of course, I know I've been in the UK, you guys love your pumpkin pie lattes. This is what you need to make that at home. Um, we've got some fantastic recipes on just how to make a pumpkin pie latte with this. Um, but cheesecake, oh my gosh, it's amazing. Um, I use it on, if I'm going to have hot cereal, if I'm going to have rolled oats or any other like porridge, that kind of thing in the morning, this goes on it. It's my favorite on the, on the um, hot cereal. It just has a little bit more earthiness than the apple pie. Now, what I love about this is you can put this on savory or sweet. It doesn't, it's not tied to one. So it's really great on pumpkin or squash, a little bit of butter, some salt if you want, and this, you've got gorgeous squash. Um, people have used it on oh, um, corn, corn on the cob, fantastic, same thing. A little bit of butter, a little bit of salt, and this, good, beautiful corn on the cob. Um, but it's really, really great on beef too. Uh, so don't be stuck on um, just thinking it's for one particular um, genre. It is not just for baking, you can use it on savory as well. If you're stuck and you want to make um, more of a Middle Eastern or spicy rice or um, a tagine, you can use the pumpkin pie as well. Okay, uh, oh, rose sugar. Let me tell you, I'm, I'm, I like to tell little stories because I think it's really cool when you understand how things get developed. So this was one of the first um, sugars I made. There's no such thing as an aromatic sugar. We made that up. That's actually our name for this category. Uh, never been, uh, it's not real um, out there. But however, <clears throat> if you go look at other companies, all of a sudden, aromatic sugars has become something. We just made it up. Um, I, I was stuck for a word to describe the sugars. Um, my training is in aromatherapy, so aromatic sugars. That's how it got created. So back in the early days, going back five years ago, um, we were, it's a lot, I have to explain this even more. There were 17, 18, maybe 20 of us um, on Skype. We had Skype groups and we just used them as instant messaging. So we didn't call each other back and forth on these big groups. We just used it as instant messaging. So we were being social. And on Friday night, there was the master class on MasterChef. 
and one of the um, um, Greek chefs was doing um, Greek donuts, so it's kind of like a donut hole rolled in sugar. And what he was doing was infusing lavender buds in the sugar to create lavender sugar and then sieving them out. <clears throat> And I watched this, and of course my brain's ticking over going, well, that's really cool, but nobody's going to do it. You know, uh, there's no one in the UK that's going to do it in the dead of winter, and I, you know, I'm not going to be going outside and even trying to find lavender and infuse my sugar. So while that was really cool, it was very impractical, and I thought, well, how are we going to make that a commercial product? I had already started blending my own spices at that point. And I thought, how are we going to make this our own product, and what are we going to do with it? You know, not many people are going to be making donut holes at home, um, so how do we make this a really commercial thing? So with my aromatherapy training, I, thought, I started thinking about what other um, infusions can we use in the sugars. So I came up with rose. I have some Persian um, background in um, food um, and culture, and I love rose and in a lot of things. So I thought, you know, rose sugar would be amazing too, thinking the aromatherapy. And, um, but then we started thinking, well, what do you do with it? You know, that's great. We can, I can figure out how to do the, the sugars, and they have evolved um, over the time since then. But what do we do with it? And I immediately thought, oh, take a strawberry, slit the strawberry, rim your champagne glass, um, and then dip it into the rose sugar, and you've got a beautiful, unique, I don't know that anybody's done rose sugar rimmed champagne flutes before, and it is amazing. Leave the strawberry on top, top it up with uh, Prosecco or champagne, and you have the most amazing. Well, we all know almost the most amazing, when you add the OMG, the blood orange mango guava vinegar, to a Prosecco, now it's amazing. So you can do something very, very special at your tastings by a simple, inexpensive Prosecco, rim it with the rose sugar, add the OMG, and you know everyone's going to be raving about it. <clears throat> now, how you can use it other ways? Uh, you can use it in uh, baking, so sugar cookies, um, beautiful on pavlova, so use it as a topping. Um, it is, um, you know, little jellies. It's just a very divine, lovely sugar. And when you pair it with <clears throat> the rose white chocolate, um, you can see now how they can transfer back and forth, and the rose white chocolate dukkha as well, it becomes a real um, uh, blend. Now, uh, the rose rose vinegar, um, uh, that then you can start making martinis with those as well. Okay. So I'm going to go on to, well, speaking of drinks, let's go on, well, let's actually go back over here. I'm going to talk about the um, olive oil, the Citrus Grove olive oil. This one is a taste of Florida. We lived in Florida for a year, absolutely loved it. Surrounded by citrus groves. Everywhere you drove, you were going past a citrus grove. So um, this one is Tangelo Lemon and Lime. And um, it is in Australian extra virgin olive oil. Now, the olive oil industry globally is wrought with fraud. Um, and it's been exposed, after exposed, exposed over the past two years of what's going on um, in Europe and in California. Now, luckily, Australia doesn't, um, there's no reason. There's a lot of olive oil on the market. We, we're, people aren't cutting it down with other oils, and that's what's happening in, globally in the, in, in, in the industry. So it is extra virgin Australia pure olive oil, and um, the um, Tangelo lemon and lime. Now, what to use this one, you know, there's a lot of um, lemon or orange or lime, um, olive oils out there, but I don't like to do everything just plain. I wanted to do something that's got a real punch. And this one has climbed to one of our top selling olive oils because it's so versatile. Fantastic on um, salad, great on chicken, great on fish, great on prawns. Um, you can see that it's, uh, with that, it's great versatility. <clears throat> And who knew, but you can bake with it. Let me find that gorgeous pictures. This is a citrus grove olive oil cake. How amazing is that? All right, so I uh, can't wait for you to get the recipe and give that one a go. Okay, let's talk about our vinegars. First, the savory vinegar, and then we'll go to the right over to the sweet. So this is honey 
garlic caramelized. So this is our same great balsamic, honey balsamic vinegar that you know and love. Um, that real sweet um, fla flavor of the honey. And then it is has our has garlic added to it, just like our garlic garlic olive oil, but um, the version that works in um, water. So um, you know, water-based liquids. So the honey garlic caramelized oh, uh, teriyaki. Just think teriyaki. If you want a teriyaki flavor, anything. Um, use this. So whether you put it on um, at the very end, you drizzle it over your salad if you've got a chicken salad or a prawn salad and you want to have that teriyaki flavor, but you didn't have time to marinate everything, that's how you can create this. It's amazing. Or on your potatoes, um, fantastic as well. Um, so think, and you know, savory that way. Um, so a lot of Asian style cooking, so Japanese and um, uh, Chinese Asian style um, cooking there. Uh, and then, of course, this also lends uh, well um, to uh, Mediterranean as well. Um, so if you're doing a pasta uh, or a salad, um, you can add this one as well. Okay, the raspberry chocolate caramelized. Um, this is a raspberry caramelized balsamic vinegar with an amazing chocolate added to it. So. You know, a lot of people believe that, you know, dark chocolate and red wine go really well together. So we, t uh, that's kind of where this was inspired. But we tested this. It actually goes really, really well. Um, about a teaspoon in um, red wine. Oh my gosh. Especially those cold days that you guys still have ahead of you in the UK. This is fantastic. Um, now. Um, it's beautiful in baking though. So use it um, as a drizzle on top. You can use it in your baking if you want to have a really moist cake. This is fantastic, which is not over the top sweet. You're going to have the sweet um, raspberry, but you're going to have the tartness of the vinegar. So great, great combination for a more of an adult cake. Um, and um, brownies, uh, over ice cream, um, you know, you can also drink this one in soda water, it's fantastic over ice, um, and I'm sure those, there's people that have, I'm sure, absolutely sure in Australia, there's a few people that have got a great martini recipe um, with this vodka martini with this one as well. Okay, the coconut caramelized spiced rum. The caramel, or sorry, the spiced rum is a very unique Oh, hang on. The coconut is a very unique vinegar. We actually have this made um, for us. I saw some uh, coconut vinegar in the U.S. and um, there wasn't any in Australia. Our vinegar maker had never heard of making coconut um, into vinegar. So uh, we imported some coconut blossom nectar and we ferment this um, in our vinegar um, suppliers warehouse um, manufacturing facility and he ferments it for us uh, for three months and then we have the, one of the most unique vinegars out there. Um, of course, then I've mixed it, um, blended it with uh, caramelized uh, balsamic, so now we have a super rich coconut caramelized uh, balsamic and added some spiced rum to it. Um, and now it's absolutely decadent. So this one is more for the sweets. Um, you could use it on a salad. I, you know, any of these sweeter vinegars go great on um, goat's cheese salad with some nuts and um, uh, fruit. Uh, you know, it could be pear or apple or cranberries, those dried fruits, that type of thing, and some arugula or rocket, um, spinach, great, great um, salad. Um, but this one, just in ginger beer or ginger ale, my goodness, um, amazing drink, or just on its own with soda water. Again, it almost tastes like you think, wow, that should be a soda. You know, that should actually be a, 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 a soda that should be on the market. So um, great feedback on that one as well. Okay, let's talk about chocolate powders. So there's two chocolate powders that we're releasing in the UK that have dairy. So it's these two ones, the rose white chocolate and the premium chai. Those are the only two with dairy in them at all, uh, which is fantastic. I'm, I'm not somebody who has a lot of dairy in my diet, um, and uh, these are the only two that have it in there. The rest of them don't. Um, so this one, as I said before, cheesecakes in um, ice cream uh, with the rose, um, pavlova, 
put it in whipped cream and make a mousse with it, and then you can use the rose um, sugar on top. So very, very creative uh, ways to use that. Uh, the chai, premium chai, again, fantastic in baking. So um, you can put this in baking uh, wherever you would use a chocolate powder or um, uh, in any of the, the cream-based baking that you have as well. Fantastic. And you can even use it in banana bread. It would be very rich banana bread, but you can absolutely use that um, as well. And the chai is our actual chai tea, pulverized. Um, to create this um, amazing chocolate powder. Uh, love it. And if chai tea lattes, this is amazing. Oh, and homemade ice cream. Oh, that's fantastic. Hmm, must be getting close to lunch here. All right. Um, <clears throat> chocolate pomegranate truffle is um, beautiful. So it is um, non-dairy. It has rich calibo chocolate in it as well to give it that truffle um, flavor uh, of the rich um, chocolate, dark chocolate. Uh, then it has um, uh, um, dehydrated pomegranate and um, it's all blended together. It's got such a rich flavor. Um, and again, you can use the chocolate powders all the same way. I'm not going to go through each one because they're all, you can use them interchangeably. Um, then I'm going to talk about this one, chili chocolate, um, chili chocolate almond dukkha, and this one pairs so beautifully together because this is actually in the dukkha. Uh, so if you want to do a cheesecake, and um, you can put this on the um, in the in the cheesecake and put the chili chocolate almond in the crust or on top um, dukkha, or you can um, make put this in your ice cream and have the chili chocolate almond dukkha on the top, or parfaits or brownies, same thing. So you can see how the two absolutely pair well together. Now it's not super hot um, at all. It's just got a, um, a kick to it, if that may, it makes sense. It's not hot and spicy. It's not going to burn your tongue or anything like that. It's just got a wonderful kick to it, and it's got cinnamon as well. So the two marry uh, very well together uh, as a taste of Mexico. So a great finish to your Mexican taco night is to have ice cream or mousse or cheesecake or something um, with this particular chocolate um, as well. Okay, wrap up with the final three. Salted caramel and tiramisu, perfect together. Um, now, why I want to talk to these ones, these two together, is with the salted caramel, it's designed for heat. So as you cook with it, um, you're going to get more and more of the salted caramel um, to it. It's, so it's good cold, but even better warm cooked. Uh, so in your brownies, in your lattes, in your um, you know uh, baked cheesecake or um, uh, muffins or you know any of those types of things this is how you want to use the salted caramel as well as the tiramisu now the tiramisu has also has porta wine powder so I wanted to create tiramisu in a bottle and that has the porta wine powder in it um, also uh, the calibo chocolate and top quality instant coffee that we pulverize to be able to put it in here. So it's got the coffee, the salted caramel, the wine, um, the dark rich truffle, and the milk chocolate. It is an amazing combination. Again, really comes out when you cook. Okay, last but not least, one of my favorite teas, and they're all my favorite, <laughs> who's kidding, I love everything that I create, or when created, it. it's just really that simple. But this tea was one of the very first that I created. And again, on Skype, I've had a group of people on Skype and I'm going, hey, I think I might go into the kitchen and create some teas. And so they're all hanging out waiting for me to create the next one and describe the flavors. Not even seeing it, just you know, me typing as we go. So this has hibiscus in it, um, which has a beautiful, if you, when you steep your tea, it's gonna have a beautiful red, pinky color um, to it. And the longer you do it, the more tart it's gonna get. Um, and has white peony tea, which is actually silver needle, um, white green tea. So all tea comes from the same plant. There's no such thing as different tea plants. Um, if it's got tea in it, proper tea, it will have the same tea in it, so or same plant. It's just the different stages of picking, of fermentation, of processing, drying, all of those things create different styles of teas. So the white tea is got the little hairy bits on the leaf. So just when a leaf comes out, it's got these little, what they call silver needles, white um, uh, bits on it, and it's the very young um, tea. So that's very, very expensive. Oh my gosh. 
crazy expensive. People say, why do you keep using it? It's because it's so beautiful. Um, so it's very mild green tea flavor versus a leaf that's been sitting on the plant longer, okay? So um, uh, white peony tea, organic honey bush. Now, honey bush is packed full of antioxidants. You're starting to see why I love this tea. Um, and it's usually used alongside rooibos or in a, in a tea very much like that. But I put it in this one and it is a fantastic flavor. Um, it also has organic lemongrass, so you've got now some citrus notes coming through. Organic lemon balm, a little bit of citrusy lemon, uh, but also some uh, uh, slightly grassy um, flavor in that. Um, and um, spearmint, so now you've got the mint, which helps the tummy, which is um, a catalyst, and all of the other great goodness in the rest of the ingredients. So there you have it, all 19 products out of my head um, into your kitchen or living room or den, wherever you are watching the live stream um, or watching the video. I hope that you got lots out of it and I look forward to um, talking to you all soon on, on the Aspiring Leaders program, on the um, uh, Jumpstart group or on the MSK website as well. Or, um, Facebook group as well. So have a great rest of your day wherever you are. Hope you were inspired and um, enjoy these new products. Thanks. Bye.